Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be learning a cool little stuff that you can integrate into various places, which is really neat and looks super sleek and might get your viewers attention. So that is, let's say we have this empty screen and then when I rub or move my cursor, we see a cool little image background. So how is this possible using just a bit of JavaScript and just a bit of CSS? So that is what we're gonna be learning in this video. So as you can see, when I rub this, you can see that we have a cool little image of a warrior behind the area that I'm rubbing. So this looks really neat and really cool. And this gets the attention of your clients very quick and this is super smooth and super elegant. So without any delay, let's learn how to build this. The source code of this is down in the description. So make sure to download that, play with it, use it for professional or maybe personal use cases. So yeah, without any delay, let's get started and let's learn how to do it. So here I am in my VS code, which is open on the left side and then the browser on the right. Now here I have my index.html file, which has the basic project template, which you can generate by typing exclamation and hitting the enter. And then we have our style.css file, which has removed the basic margin padding of elements and then added box sizing as border box. And then in the body, we'll set the width and height to 100 viewport height and 100 viewport width and set the overflow to hidden and have given the background as black. Now inside of the body, we're gonna start off by creating a script tag and then we're gonna listen for any mouse move events. Now, if there are any mouse move events, then we're gonna fire off this function. Now what this function will do is let's first of all console and let's see, hey, I am moving. So basically when we move, we wanna see some stuff here. So let's open our console and as we move, you can see that we have a bunch of consoles here. It says, hey, I'm moving. So basically this stuff is working correctly. Now the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna create two variables. First would hold the body and then the second one would create a span tag and then let's call it circle. And then this is what we're gonna be chaining up and then onto it, we're gonna project our image. So we're gonna append these span tags in the body by saying body to depend, and then we're gonna pass in the circle. Now, when we move our mouse here, let's open this. Let's look at the elements here. As you can see, when we move, we can see a bunch of span tags here. Okay, these are getting created instantly when we move our mouse here. Now, we don't want the spans to get piled up, which would basically slow our website down. So what we wanna do is after a certain interval of time, we're gonna remove these spans. So to do that, we're gonna create this set timeout. So the set timeout basically takes in two things. The first is the function, and then the second one is the time. So after that specific time, this function would get called. So let's say 3000 milliseconds, which is basically three seconds. So after three seconds passes by, this will call this function which would basically remove the circle or the span tags. Now this won't remove all the circles or the span tags instantly. It would basically start off from the first one, basically the one that got created the first and then gradually would go on removing the other spans. Let's look at it now. Let's say I create these. You see that gradually one after the other, the different spans, got removed. You see, you don't get removed instantly, but it takes time and slowly the spans get removed. Now, let's do something which makes it easier for us to visualize stuff. So here we're gonna target the span tag. We're gonna give it a width and height, and then a border radius of 50%, and then a background color of red. Now, let's do here, let's move, but then we don't see anything here in the browser. The reason for that is because spans are initially inline elements, so width and height property don't get added to them. So first, let's do one thing. Let's add here property of display block. And when we move, as you can see, 
uh, we have a bunch of red circles here. Now there are more of them which are overflowing down, but we have removed overflow to hidden, so we can't really see them outside of this viewport. So this was the initial step that we had to take. Now let's add here the position absolute property, and then we're gonna set the top and left value. Now when we scroll, or when we move our mouse in the browser, you would see that we have one circle only which is at the top left zero. But then this is not only one circle. If I were to open the developer tools and if I hover, you see that we have a bunch of span tags, but the only problem is every one of them have this top left to zero. So basically they are stacking up in one single place, which makes us look at one single circle. So we don't want this, we want each individual circle to have a specific position that is based on the current position of our mouse. So to do that, what we're gonna do is nothing complicated, we're gonna create, or we're gonna style the circle, and we're gonna give it a left value of negative 50, since the width is 100, so we're gonna just take half of it, and then we're gonna reduce that, and then we're gonna add target events or so whatever event that is getting passed in this function we're going to take the offset x and then we're going to add a pixel to that so whatever value it has for the offset x it would get added to this negative 50 and that is what will be the left position of that individual circle so let's save that you see this is only happening for left now let's add similar way for the Y, which is for the top value. Now, as you can see, when we move, we can see a smooth pattern. But then you would also see that up top here, even though we're not moving on the top left corner, we have some stuff going on there. So to remove that, all we gotta do is add here pointer events to none. And now you would see a more smoother version of the same thing. So this is more like a pattern drawing where you can draw stuff into the browser itself. Now that is done. So basically our JavaScript is done. And the CSS, now we're gonna add a background. So here you pass in the URL of the image. So let's say we pass in this. And then you pass in the background position of top left background size cover, and then background attachment as fixed. And with that, you have the cool scratch kind of effect using JavaScript and a bit of CSS. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something new. Hope this was new for it. So you could use this effect for your website. Now I know this, this video is a bit short, but I think we learned a something really cool which you can integrate into various places. So hope this, hope this video was helpful. Make sure to comment down what you liked about this video. Like this video and share it with your friends who are interested in learning web development. And then do subscribe if you're new to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And then make sure to turn the notifications bell on so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. So with that being said, meet you guys in the next. Till then, bye bye.